All right, uh, in this video, we're going to find the area of a region bounded by two polar curves. So we're going to ask ourselves, what's the area of the region that lies outside the circle r equals sine theta and inside the circle r equals 2 sine theta? So we could make some arguments based on areas of circles to do this. But again, uh, I just want to emphasize the integration and talk about all that good stuff. So first, I'm going to graph r equals sine theta. Notice if our angle theta was equal to 0. If theta is equal to 0, we'll get r equals sine of 0, which is 0. As the angle increases from uh, 0 up to pi over 2, uh, sine is going to go from 0 up to 1. So what we're going to get is a little circle here. And then um, as theta goes from pi over 2 to pi, the radius is going to go from 1 back down to 0. All right, so we don't need to trace out, uh, we don't need to go from 0 to 2 pi to get the entire circle is what I'm saying here. Okay, so again, uh, we get the entire circle r equals sine theta as theta ranges from 0 to pi. Well, r equals 2 sine theta is just going to be the exact same thing. It's just going to be a little bit bigger. All right, so here's r equals 2 sine theta. And then we have r equals sine theta. So to set this up, uh, I'm going to think about using the 1 half r squared d theta formula. Now here we're going to have to change things a little bit. Okay, So um, for us, what we're going to use is definitely the 1 half should be there. And the way I'm going to think about it is, I'm going to find basically the um, area of the, uh, the large circle. So that would be 1 half, and then we would just integrate, uh, we would use 1 half 2 sine theta quantity squared, d theta. And again, to get the entire circle, we would only go from 0 to pi, not 0 to 2 pi. And then we could subtract away the area of the inside circle, which would, we could compute by doing 1 half. Um, and in this case, we would just use sine theta, quantity squared, d theta, again from 0 to pi. So that'll be the setup. Uh, that'll be the, this will be the integrals we'll have to compute. Uh, to make life a little bit easier, I'm going to do. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and stick all of this together. So, so I'm going to factor the one half out. This is going to be four sine squared theta. And also, uh, we can just subtract away. Again, I'm going to factor the one half. I'm going to put these integrals together. And here we would have sine squared theta, d theta. And again, here we're just integrating from 0 to pi. So I've just factored the 1 halves out front. So all I did was factor the 1 half out front. Um, and then I just put those integrals together. So now we can compute this. Uh, let's see, that's going to be 1 half the integral from 0 to pi of 3 sine squared theta. Well, here we're going to have to use our trig identity. So there's our 3. The identity we'll use for sine squared theta, uh, recall it's 1 half 1 minus cosine of 2 theta, d theta. And now, let's see, so we'll have 3 halves times a half. That'll be 3 over 4. We've got the integral from 0 to pi. 1 minus cosine 2 theta. And this isn't too terrible to integrate. We'll just get 3 fourths. We'll get theta uh, minus sine 2 theta over 2. And again, you could just integrate the second part using a u substitution. Let u equal 2 theta. Uh, and then we're going to evaluate all of this stuff from 0 to pi. So let's see. Looks to me like we'll get 3 fourths, we'll get pi. We'll get sine of 2 pi, but sine of 2 pi is just going to be 0. Minus, then when we plug in the lower limits of integration, we're just going to get uh, 0 minus sine of 0, which is, again, 0. So to me, it looks like we're just going to be left with the value of 3 fourths times pi, and that will be the area um, that's um, enclosed by 
the larger circle, but again is outside the smaller circle. So not what I have shaded at the moment, but again we've computed the area We've now computed the area of that part.